was cast. It's one of the oldest towns in the state. Um, it's the one place on Route 1 in the state of Maine where your traffic will slow to a stop in the summer, largely because of one little lobster stand. For almost 30 years, Don Hudson has lived near Wiscasset, Maine, the self-proclaimed prettiest village in the state. Just down the road from this picturesque little town stand the remnants of a nuclear power plant. If we were standing here 15 years ago, you would have seen right over those trees, right, right yep, great big concrete dome. In its heyday, this nuclear power plant, known as Maine Yankee, provided jobs, property taxes, and power to six New England states. But after two decades, problems with cables and steam generators made it too costly to keep operating, and the plant powered down in 1996. The company demolished most of the buildings and shipped the rubble to a low-level radioactive dump out of state. Behind me is the site of the former Maine Yankee nuclear power plant. All that's left today are these 64 casks of waste. Inside those casks are more than 500 tons of radioactive waste created during Maine Yankee's operation. It's a legacy at the center of a growing problem across the United States. Maine Yankee is just one site. Throughout the country, there are more than 80 others storing nuclear waste, 70,000 tons of it altogether. Everybody knew going into it that the waste was going to be an issue. And, um, you know, we went to the moon and back, and they still haven't solved the problem of what to do with nuclear waste. The problem is there's just nowhere for it to go. By law, the Department of Energy is responsible for nuclear waste disposal. But for more than half a century, the government's been trying to come up with a plan to deal with the waste. And while they're figuring it out, massive amounts of high-level radioactive material keep piling up. I mean, I hate to say this, but, you know, I, I imagine that I'll be dead and that fuel will still be there. As you can see, the public is precluded. Eric Howes is the public affairs director for Maine Yankee. He's probably one of the only people in the country who wants his company to go out of business. We're no longer generating electricity. Our power plant is fully decommissioned. Um, and uh, if it weren't for the fact that the spent nuclear fuel is still here, Maine Yankee would be out of business. The company has been waiting 12 years, he says, for the government to come cart away the nuclear material. I mean, the bottom line is it's the government's responsibility to remove this, both by contract and law. Um, you know, where they take it or what they do with it is up to them. Uh, we would just like them to, to honor their, uh, their side of the agreement. Until it does, Maine Yankee has to be the de facto babysitter for those more than 500 tons of radioactive waste. And that high-level security and storage doesn't come cheap. It costs between six and eight million dollars a year to store the spent nuclear fuel here. Uh, it also cost around 75 million dollars to build the fuel storage facility, which where we keep the spent nuclear fuel. Maine Yankee is trying to recover the money. We're suing the government, along with most other nuclear utilities in the country, uh, because uh, the federal government was to begin removing this material uh, in 1998. And they haven't been here. They haven't removed any fuel from Maine Yankee. Maine Yankee argues that the federal government is in breach of its contract with utilities. This September, a court agreed, awarding the company $82 million in damages. It's American taxpayers who are footing the bill. And that's just a drop in the bucket. To date, there are more than 70 similar lawsuits that have been filed. So far, the government owes $2 billion in judgments and settlements to nuclear utility companies. Again, that's American tax dollars. And the number could climb to $13 billion in the next 11 years. Uh, we need to be in Daniel Poneman is the Deputy Secretary of Energy. So I think there's more than 70 lawsuits um, filed against the federal government. Mm -hmm. It's the taxpayer that's ultimately paying yeah. for those damages, correct? We take our responsibilities as steward for the taxpayer dollar extremely seriously. We are looking to the most effective, not only technical, but cost-effective solutions moving forward. But you agree that it's been, even your own agency has estimated that the cost 
to taxpayers in a decade could be $13 billion from these lawsuits. Well, uh, I, I don't know what the current estimate of what the, the cost would be. Obviously, we're trying to find a path forward that will be most economical and uh, the best value for the taxpayer. If they don't, the costs will skyrocket. After the year 2021, the Department of Energy estimates that payouts to utilities will increase by hundreds of millions of dollars each year that the government fails to take away the nuclear waste. And the nation is about to embark on a path that may well exacerbate this problem. Today, we get 20% of our electricity from nuclear plants. But President Obama has made it clear that nuclear power should play a larger role in our country's energy future. To meet our growing energy needs and prevent the worst consequences of climate change, we'll need to increase our supply of nuclear power. It's one of the rare issues where President Obama has strong support from Republicans. We need the message on nuclear to be a good one. We need to get serious about making nuclear energy uh, a big part of this. You know, it's a familiar refrain. Over the decades, Americans have been asked to embrace nuclear energy many times. But the public has always been torn between the attraction of its promise and the fear of its terrible power. There is no denying that since that moment, the shadow of the atom bomb has been across all our lives. By the 1950s, the U.S. had harnessed the immense force of the atom as a weapon of war. But the federal government and industry were also eager to exploit nuclear energy's peaceful potential. Just take a look at this promotional film paid for by GE. The future supplying of electric power to entire cities is far from impossible. Powering the city was the promise, and the country seemed on track to making it a reality. Dozens of new reactors were built in the 60s and 70s. At the time, used fuel was recycled or reprocessed into more fuel. But that process left a dangerous byproduct, plutonium, a key component of an atomic bomb. At the height of the arms race, with more and more countries conducting nuclear tests, the U.S. government feared plutonium would fall into the wrong hands. So in 1977, the government banned reprocessing. And the end of reprocessing meant the beginning of our nuclear waste dilemma. Thousands of tons of spent nuclear fuel began to pile up. More than 10 years of debate and indecision followed, but then finally a solution. Yucca Mountain in the Nevada desert was selected as the permanent repository to bury all of the nation's nuclear waste. The process of removing the fuel was to begin in 1998, but that didn't happen. Why did the government make this promise and then 10 years later the waste is still there? Well, these are not, they're not easy issues. There were lots of disagreements on, on the particular site and they ran into a number of cul-de-sacs. Yucca Mountain had been chosen because it was a remote location and scientists said the geology would be perfect for tens of thousands of years of waste storage. But the state of Nevada didn't want it, and many questioned the safety of thousands of tons of nuclear waste being transported across the country by truck and rail. After two decades of fighting, the state found an ally. What part of I'm not in favor of Yucca Mountain do you not understand? Citing safety and economic concerns, in an election year, in the swing state of Nevada, candidate Barack Obama announced his opposition to Yucca Mountain. And today, he says it's off the table. We spent over $10 billion, more than two decades, discussing Yucca Mountain as a permanent place to put all this nuclear waste. So is all that money, all that time spent on Yucca, is it just a waste? Well, uh, I would have gladly seen the point reached sooner, uh, but it is what it is, and the amount that's been invested in it, such uh, learning as we've got from it, we're trying to preserve so it'll be available to anybody who needs it. So that leaves the nation with the same old question. What to do with 70,000 tons of nuclear waste as we look to building a new generation of nuclear reactors? The solution after 60 years of debate? Convene a panel to figure it out. In January, President Obama appointed a group of nuclear insiders to a Blue Ribbon Commission on America's nuclear future. They have 18 months to come up with recommendations. So where are they looking for answers? 
One place the Blue Ribbon Commission is studying is Europe. In Spain, eight small towns are vying to house waste from the country's nuclear reactors. The draw? Millions of dollars and hundreds of jobs. And in Finland and Sweden, the same story. The prospect of more employment and a better economy have some communities actually competing for the waste. But back in Wiscasset, Maine, residents like Don Hudson wonder why our country can't come up with a plan. It's just frustrating that we're now talking again about generating more electricity with nuclear power and we still haven't dealt with the stuff that we created 60 years ago. Hudson thinks public pressure might be what's needed for the nation to finally move forward. If more of the public was aware that we are talking about trying to reinvent the nuclear industry in this country, which is probably, I'll say grudgingly, a good thing for, for the country to do, um, it's going to need to resolve this waste issue.